So when I do stories like this, I'm usually looking at why are we talking about this topic? And a huge reason we're talking about this topic is it's really the only other major full-on AAA game that has been announced by Nintendo, but we don't have concrete news on and of course we're talking about metroid prime 4 because as you may or may not be aware there is brand new rumors floating around from a fairly reliable source someone we actually talked about in our last video and this actually all comes from the same podcast so we talked about his switch 2 stuff in our last video but this is also some metroid prime 4 stuff and we're talking about special nick from xbox era but before we dive into what he had to say about metroid prime 4 from a buddy he claims has actually literally seen metroid prime 4 i mean that's why we're talking about it i want to remind you we're on a road to 150 thousand subscribers and so yeah if you could just go ahead and ringling that dingling which is the uh the little notification bell so you get notified of all of our stuff you can also drop a like and subscribe to the channel that would be great so what did we learn from nick on his podcast from xbox era which we'll have linked down below well he said a couple really exciting things about the game first off is that visually it looks unbelievable now look that is that much of a surprise i mean metroid prime remaster already looks incredible on nintendo switch and we would suppose a made from ground up metroid prime game specifically for switch heck maybe even switch 2 is going to end up looking visually stunning so being an impressive visual feast isn't really that surprising and i know you might go well on switch wouldn't it be surprising not when you played metroid prime remaster there's just something about the outer space theme and some things that make certain elements a bit easier and less taxing on the GPU and CPU, allowing for a massive emphasis on, you know, visual quality in other areas and other details, such as enemies and explosions and obviously, you know, Samus herself. So it should be a pretty big visual feast anyways. But if that was all we had to talk about, we, we wouldn't even be making this video because talking about the visuals doesn't really mean much. Just saying it looks unbelievable is not anything new for Metroid Prime. But this next part is. So this is it's just paraphrasing with a little bit of a quote. It is surprisingly open for a Metroid Prime game and has much larger areas than in prior games now okay do we have an example actually yes his buddy who literally was watching the game being played said it reminded him of halo infinite's vastness now for those that might not be aware of what this means in regards to nintendo because you're just not really that aware of what the heck is going on with halo infinite well, Halo Infinite, it, it, if you play it, actually has basically an open world. And it's really, really huge. I, I can't begin to even describe how big the world is. And so when it reminds you of that, while the, they're not saying that the game is open world, the fact that we could have several areas and zones that are super vast, uh, open world-esque, maybe more like akin to Pokemon Legends Arceus to give you an idea where it has not an open world, but an open zone. And look, we have had some of these open areas in Metroid Prime games before, but they're not really that big, if we're honest, especially compared to modern gaming. To imagine that is obviously incredible. Now, I can give you some other details that you may not be aware about Metroid Prime 4 as well. These are just from my own personal sources and have been talked about on the channel before, but I understand we don't really have individual videos on Metroid Prime or Metroid Prime 4 pretty much at all on my channel, so you might not be aware of things I've said in the past, but Metroid Prime 4 is basically done and it's coming out in 2024. That's what I've been told from some of my own personal sources. So take for that what you will. You stack that with how visually stunning it is, with the vastness of it. Yeah, it looks incredible. I can also tell you it definitely is coming to Nintendo Switch. And we even had a recent report we had in one of our prior videos. Again, wasn't titled a Metroid video, but we put more than one story in most of our videos. This sort of being the caveat where we're literally just focusing on the one game. But 
it was standard that was coming next year and coming to Switch by other people as well. I just am very, very happy to see this happening. And the statement about it coming to next year from the other people, by the way, was that it would be the Switch's swan song, suggesting it's not going to be a cross-generation game. Rather, it's going to be the last major exclusive title dropped on Nintendo Switch next year. So... That's pretty interesting. Also, sort of suggests it's the last major exclusive coming from Nintendo uh, for Switch. That might shock some people who thought maybe they would still drop some games on Switch, you know, moving forward, do a bunch of cross-gen stuff. Maybe that's not going to be in the cards for Nintendo and, and the Switch platform. Maybe they will do a hard transition. Well, obviously still keeping up online support and all that stuff and encouraging third-party releases. Maybe Nintendo is not going to have that much in the cards for it, of course, it feels weird when I hear that Metroid Prime will be the swan song because I'm pretty confident Pokemon games are going to be releasing on Switch the next couple of years. The Pokemon company doesn't like to abandon popular systems for systems who haven't sold very well. If that's the case and Pokemon is literally about to go exclusively on Switch 2 out the gate, then Nintendo will have done some pretty strong, big strong arming of the Pokemon company and Game Freak to make that happen, and I don't know why they would when Nintendo just makes bank on Pokemon anyways. Let it be on Switch only, or let it be cross-generation if you could, they could somehow do that. Of course, they struggle to get games to run on a single platform. Can't imagine what it'd be like if Game Freak had to try to optimize for two platforms. They're, they're, they're barely optimizing for one in some cases. I gotta admit, Pokemon Legends Arceus runs pretty well. That was also by Game Freak. Why does that run so well while well, Scarlet and Violet doesn't? I can't explain it other than they have different teams making different games and they just, for some reason, aren't communicating on how to optimize. I don't know. Maybe they're not even using the same engines. There's probably already information out there on, on that anyway, so I probably shouldn't even speculate on that because I could have just did a quick Google search. That being said, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is a much shorter video because it's just about this single individual topic, and I want to let you guys know that I really appreciate you guys being here. I, I was teasing on Twitter because I already knew about this news before it started to break in other places i was hoping i could wait till tomorrow that this was going to break our streak of our switch 2 videos i already knew this video was going to be made i just it's funny uh when i when i'm reading all the comments on all the switch 2 videos because they've been doing incredibly well and i thank you guys so much for tuning in to all of that stuff and there'll be more switch 2 videos in the future I, I just find it funny when I read some of the complaints and all of that being like, oh my gosh, this is all you talk about. I'm like, I, if you guys pay attention, I was putting other stories in with those videos that weren't just about Switch 2. Like we had the Red Dead Redemption thing, that news when it broke that it was coming to Switch, that was in one of those Switch 2 videos. It's almost like I was using the attention Switch 2 gets to deliver the other news that you guys never tune in to watch. Okay, I shouldn't say never, but a lot of you guys don't tune in to watch. So I'm still doing the news. That's what we do. We, t get, we reveal the news, we talk about the news, and we bring it to your screen. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.